Good evening, everyone. The topic I've chosen is the correlation between music and cognitive load. I want to start off with a little information about myself. My name is Savannah Amos, and I'm currently a senior at Chatham High School. This fall, I plan on attending Liberty University to pursue a major in nursing. Before getting on to the information I have learned from previous studies, I would like to answer the question as to why I chose this topic. One of the main reasons I chose this topic is because music has been a big part of my life since I was a child. I've been in piano lessons for about five years, and then I switched to marching band for another five years. But along with my interest in music, I have also had a passion for psychology. Most of the research I have found has not agreed on one specific conclusion, which opens up the need for more research on this topic. Cognitive load is the amount of strain placed on a person's mind at any given moment. There are two things that determine the level of cognitive load a person is under. The complexity of the task, the ability to process information. Cognitive load is looked into when going through the learning process as it can determine the level of cognitive load a person is experiencing. As expertise is gained in a certain field, self-regulation processes will grow and the subject will be relatively easier to understand. To reach the most efficient completion of a task, the perfect cognitive load must be obtained. In order to do this, one must look at the amount of effort being put into the task. When too much effort is put into a task, cognitive overload may be resulted in. But if not enough effort is put into a task, one may get bored and lose focus. Cognitive tasks are employed so that people understand the level of mental exertion needed to complete a task. These tasks are used to improve brain growth and enhance learning without jeopardizing task performance. The goal of this is to improve one's ability to learn and reduce cognitive load while working. Depending on how complex a task is, cognitive load may be affected. While some sources stated that although one test was more difficult than another, the results were relatively the same. But others suggest that simple tasks elicit a smaller amount of cognitive load than complex tasks. But along with the complexity of the task, the environment a task takes place in can contrib contribute to cognitive load. As an environment becomes increasingly busy, cognitive load may be increased. It is yet to be determined whether or not music is beneficial or detrimental to cognitive load. While some sources stated that music can positively affect performance, others suggest that music impairs the completion of tasks. To understand why there are different results obtained in previous studies, three different theories can be examined. Both the Mozart effect and the mood and arousal hypothesis explain how music is beneficial to cognitive load. These suggest that the likeness of a certain piece will affect the cognitive strain a person is under. Contrasting those two theories is the distraction conflict theory. This theory posits that in order to complete a task efficiently, few distractions must be present. One way to evaluate cognitive load is through examining a person's process and speed. The amount of cognitive strain a person is under can be determined by how quickly they take in and understand information. The faster they are able to process the information they are taking in, the faster they are able to accommodate it. Time on task uses the speed at which a person met processes information to measure cognitive load. This use of measurement is one of the most influential and economical methods of measuring cognitive load. While I found multiple sources stating how music affected cognitive load, not, none of them use puzzles as a form of measurement. Many of the sources found showed different results when testing music on cognitive load, showing the need behind this research topic. Through the use of one of the most efficient methods of measurement, time on task, the correlation between music and cognitive load will be examined. The shortage of research in this field has led me to my research question. How does music correlate with cognitive load? The null hypothesis I formed based on previous articles was that if students listen to music without lyrics, then there will be no difference in their cognitive load, showing no relation to the speed at which they complete their task. The research hypothesis I formed based on previous articles was that if students listen to music without lyrics, then their cognitive load will be lessened, in turn causing them to complete the task faster. 
I chose this type of music to focus on based on the benefits and drawbacks as listed in previous sources. While music with lyrics seem to be too distracting, no music at all calls the participant to overthink their task. With these in mind, I decided that music without lyrics would be the best environment for a less than cognitive load. The independent variable for my experiment was the type of music played. This included music without lyrics and music with lyrics. The dependent variable of my experiment was the level of cognitive load experienced while listening to the different types of music. The control environment for my experiment was the no music environment, as this is a normal environment a person is found in. The constants include the type of headphones worn, the number of puzzle pieces, and the type of playlist played. The first step in my experiment included getting consent from all participants. After this was finished, I then collected all my materials. This included headphones as shown in the top picture, 10 to 48 piece puzzles, and a stopwatch, which was used on the computer. An example of one of my puzzles is shown in the bottom corner. The sample size for my experiment was 10. This small number was due to the fact that all participants needed to be the same throughout each trial in order to track their progress. My sample population included 11th and 12th graders at Chatham High School. The top picture included me walking around to see how my experiment was going, and the bottom picture is a closer view of some of my participants. After I gathered my materials, it was then time to start my experiment. As each participant walked into the library, they would each sign in, listing their name, date, time, and signature on the form as you can see in the top picture. After they all signed in, a pair of headphones and a puzzle was given to each person. As this was being done, they would each pull up a stopwatch on their computer, as you can see in the bottom photo. Once all materials were distributed and everyone was ready, they would then start their stopwatch and begin their puzzle. After they were done, they would then stop their stopwatch. I would then take up their materials and store them in a bin for the library for the next day. After doing this for three days, I then compiled all my raw data and debriefed all the participants. Lastly, I conducted my statistical analysis using data classroom. Here I have created a scatter plot with the different means circled in black to represent my statistical test results. The minor difference in the means shows that each music type has similar effects on cognitive load. Focusing in more on the difference in adjectives, as you can see with the green and blue points, there is a much larger difference between the music lyrics and the no music environment. This shows that these two groups are not closely related. Only the no music group, as shown in green, had a significant outlier. This shows that rather than having a similar result for everyone in the no music group, everyone was affected in a slightly different manner. Opposite of the no music group, the music with lyrics group, as shown in blue, had very similar effects on cognitive load. This is shown through the cluster points all in the same area. I used a one-way endeavor for my statistical test results. This test allowed me to compare the different times of my three different music types. My one-way ANOVA acquired a p-value of 0.4. This showed that there was little to no indication that the music types presented different results from each other. Therefore, my findings were not significant. Addressing the statistical variables, my research hypothesis stating that music without lyrics would result in less than cognitive load could not be supported. While my study failed to produce any significant findings, there are certain ones that are worth noting. While some participants had a better time in the prior environment rather than either of the musical environments, I am able to infer that this is due to their preference in music. As it was stated in my literature review, the mood and arousal hypothesis shows that a person's preference in music could affect their cognitive load. Along with this, the differences in people's times could be attributed to whether or not they found the puzzle complex. As it was stated in my literature review, the complexity of a puzzle could the complexity of the task could affect the cognitive load a person is experiencing. My results showed that music neither hinders nor benefits cognitive load. This means that people listening to music in a working environment should not affect their level of performance. My results also showed that people are able to adapt to any environment that they are placed in. Lastly, I would like to point out that the use of time on task 
seem to be effective in measuring the cognitive load a person experienced while playing the, doing their puzzle. One of the limitations worth noting in my experiment was the small sample size. It was explained in my methods as to why this was, but my results could have differed if a larger sample size had been included. With this, my, the stopwatch method I used could have affected the results, as the participants were able to see their time throughout the puzzle. This could have caused more stress for them and, in turn, cognitive overload. While my study selected participants based on a convenient sampling method, future research could use a cluster sampling method in order to represent the population as a whole in a better form. Also, future research could redo this experiment without any outside people to distract the participants. Narrowing this down, only one participant could be included at a time so that no participant would be stressed about finishing before another. Also, although some of my work seemed a bit tedious, it was all needed to do my experiment. Not only did this work help me to do my experiment, it also gave me skills in a multitude of areas. These areas included critical thinking, organization, and collaboration. None of these would have been possible without the work I had once thought was tedious, because in the end, it was all worth it. To conclude my research, I would like to thank all, everyone who helped me throughout this difficult procedure. I would like to thank all my participants for participating in my study, along with Ms. Fang, who helped me help to approve my methodology. Lastly, I would like to thank Ms. Long for helping me to not only choose a topic, but also for all the helpful feedback I received from my paper and my slideshow. And with that, are there any questions? I have a question. Um, what was the genre of your music? What type of music? You said there were no words, but. Ms. Long, Ms. Collins asked um, what genre of music was played for the participants. I randomly chose one as each participant listened to the same one. But for my musical lyrics one, I chose one of the most popular um, playlists. It was Taylor Swift um, because I believe a good amount of people do like that more. So I used the mood and arousal hypothesis to support that. Do you think it would have made a difference if they could have chosen? I believe that it definitely could have made a difference if they had liked the music or if they were able to confirm that they liked the music that I had played. How about the volume level? Was the volume level the same for each participant? Dr. Jones asked if the volume level of the music played was this could have affected it. Um, so the volume level was the same throughout each one. Um, since they used the same type of headphones, they were able to have the same quality of music as well. Did you rank anything in your research about classical music? Um, Dr. Jones asked if I read anything in my research about classical music. The Mozart effect that I had mentioned in my literature review actually was based on um, one of Mozart's pieces, which in turn uh, showed how the likeness of that piece had affected cognitive load for the participants. Uh, and I know you had a picture of your uh, puzzle up there, but did you have used the same puzzle for everyone or, or did you have multiple different puzzles? Ms. Watts asked if I had the same puzzle for each participant. I had 10 different puzzles used, so each time that they would come in, they would get a different puzzle. I recorded each puzzle that they did so that they wouldn't have the same puzzle each time. Do you think the complexity of the puzzle, the variation of the complexity of the puzzle for each participant might have been affecting it in some way? Ms. Wolf asked if the complexity of the puzzle could have affected it in any way, and I believe it definitely could have, um, because as I got my results, it seemed that certain puzzles had a different level of complexity, even though there were the same amount of pieces, which could have caused that outlier that I had. Did you do a pre-survey of if they like to do puzzles? <laughs> Ms. Collins asked if I did a survey to see if they actually liked puzzles. I actually did not, which future research could definitely do that in order to get a um, more validity in their research. Um, so puzzles, especially physical puzzles, they're 
in themselves are very complex. I mean, you have like the cognitive levels, the spatial awareness, and even body motor skills, putting the piece in the right place. So I'm curious as to why you chose puzzles um, rather than just a simple point and click task on a computer. Um, because I, I think puzzles could have affected you a lot in a way you might have thought about it. Um, since there is a lot of different things that are going in when you do a puzzle. Ms. Pant asked me to clarify as to why I chose a puzzle instead of a easier task that would only affect more or less uh, just one area. And I chose this based on one of the articles I had read, um, which they gave. Um, it was a bit hard because it was in a different language, so it was um, transferred over. But it had said um, that it helped in productivity, helped to measure the level of productivity people had um, measured, and so I thought that that would be more of a different scope of research that not a lot of people had done, and so I wanted to try and fill a gap 